blog post. Let's talk about it. So we're going to start with what it is and maybe a couple of things that it isn't. So it's a blog post talking about the next patch, more or less, like totally Jubilee. So uh, get ready to like the fuse in your Sonic X-Men team. As it is, this sentence already only somewhat matters. So many players are either not prepared for this team. Um, they are a raid team. We have good raid teams right now for all of the content that currently exists. This team will be a useful team as far as raids are concerned. So basically, as far as the Astonishing X-Men is concerned, Jubilee looks impressive, but the actual team itself is not necessarily something that I imagine a lot of players are interested or hyping up right now, outside of whether you are already in Endgame or maybe you're incredibly interested in X-Men characters, that kind of thing. So, starting off, we have Explosive Capabilities of Jubilee. We've already gone over her. She's great. Bishop's great. Good characters. Awesome. Uh, to join this adventure, you need a small but mighty Pym Tech team. So, first, we're going to talk about these. Uh, these are the recommendations. They always give recommendations. They are... Anyone who's anyone knows, these are dramatically over-exaggerated. Um, because it's in their best interest. You know, they don't want to give you the absolute bare minimum to tell you, like, hey, this team will get done, you know, if only invest in one of the characters. Like, just invest in, in stature and ghost or something. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to give you what they believe was reliable enough of an investment to accomplish the task. Now, I don't believe they test it. We've talked about this. They have no QA. But you can even kind of tell, like, you have two choices. Believe that Mission 5, 6, and 7 were designed to be about five levels apart, about one gear tier apart, about, you know, one ability apart, one red star for the highest Stark Tech level, like... No, we all accept the fact that these are ridiculous, but they're they're nice to see just in general to get an idea. Um, yeah, I imagine level 60 is probably the start point for anywhere in your roster if you want to use the team. If I had to guess, I would say you want a strong ghost yellow jacket and either Ant-Man or Stature, whichever one you can afford to put the most gear into. Just to make sure the team is tanked out. Most of the time in these unlock events, especially for the 5 and 6, you end up with a version of the character you're unlocking. So you might get a Jubilee. You might get a Jubilee and a Bishop. In past fights, you know, you've gotten Doc Ock. You've gotten a bunch of different characters just to get the feel for them. So I don't think you quite need to be here. I would say the 5 star, you're probably going to want to average about 30k a character, maybe a little less on some than others. If the team is 150, it'll work. The team can probably do it at 100, you know, depending on where the investments are. You could have nothing in your wasp and the rest of the characters are all like 40k. There's a whole bunch of different ways. I don't think it's going to take that much. I think somewhere in the sweet spot, I think 100k you should be fine on the team. And I think that level 60, gear tier 10, 6664, couple red stars, and I guess Stark Tech. With ISO 8s now, I don't, like, the Stark Tech being level 10, which is not even a thing, I think ISO 8s kind of cover for him. So if you have, like, a level 2 or 3 ISO 8 on, on at least a couple of the characters, you should be fine. As low as 80k, I'd say 100k is like a pretty good start. 150 for the five is where you want to be to make sure that one, the team is good. Two, you can walk through the fight without worrying too much. And you won't have to go too far to go to mission six, which I do imagine is somewhere from the 120 to 170 range. And mission seven does tend to cost a little bit more. So let's assume that's 150 to 200, somewhere around there. That's just my guess is based on the way things have worked in the past and how they don't really make it a challenge to unlock the character insofar as as when you get the characters to five reasonable investment alone should be able to get you there uh, we have events and offers coming up to help boost your pen sure wonderful great 
Uh, a special note, in our previous blog, we mentioned that Nick Fury Legendary Event was coming up next, but this has been delayed. Nick Fury will return in the near future, so stay tuned for more information. This can mean one of two things. Um, first of all, I don't believe that they are replacing the coming up next Nick Fury event with the Jubilee event. I don't think that they've pushed Jubilee up. Uh, Nick Fury was supposed to be next Monday. Not this coming Monday at the time of this video, but the Monday after it. So I don't think Jubilee is going to be the Monday after it. If it is, if she comes out the Monday after this event, assuming the patch is Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, eh, probably not. Probably not much happening. So I, I don't think that's what happened. I don't think they, they moved Jubilee up. I think they just pushed Nick Fury back because... As we've all expected, some of the older legendaries are not impressive. People aren't going out of their way to get them anymore. They might be trying to maneuver something new in. Or they might be trying to do a different event for Nick Fury or a tie-in. They might try to line up Nick Fury's event with something with the Battle Pass or an event inside um, RTA. Something else is going to happen. Now, if literally from the time of this video, 10 days from now, the Jubilee event is, we can call them on their shenanigans. They definitely moved the Jubilee event up. It was not never going to be this quickly, but we'll see. Dark Dimension 4 Celebration, if you have heard Cry of recent, yeah, whatever, no one cares. So uh, watch Red Manek Shake It. This is a guy named Yags. Yags completed Dark Dimension. Um, he's going to have his name written the same places that you can see Widowmakers and Tadano Mac and random maps. It's pretty cool to, to say it's been done. And we're going to get stuff for it. So according to this, we'll be holding a celebration to honor, including a 100 shard character reward. More information is on the way. So keep your inbox. Now, to my knowledge, he, uh, Yags, the guy who won, put a, like a, pull, a poll out. And everybody chose Cole Obsidian. So I expect this to be a Cole uh, Obsidian character shard reward. I hope it's not. Personally, I could use 100 coal shards. I think a lot of people could, but I, th I think there's maybe a couple better characters. Um, characters that are better in the game than coal, regardless of how difficult it could be to gain access to coal from those premium orbs. I also have a reason to believe that he won't be in premium orb exclusives for too long, but that's just hearsay. Uh, put your enemies on, I don't care. Okay, Miles Blitz, not very relevant. Uh, for average player, decent to give you about 21 to 42 shards, depending on how high you can complete the Blitz if you're not looking to spend the, the currency for it. But he's a Blitz store character, not very uh, high impact. Uh, but then we have Iceman Blitz, which is going to be about two weeks, starting next week. And then we're going to have a Bishop Blitz. And I don't really feel good about the fact that three of the characters needed for this X-Men team are Blitzes. I also don't feel particularly great about the fact that none of them were campaigns. Usually, a completed team will have one campaign character, going back to thinking of like characters like Scream or Stature or uh, what other teams have come out. None. <laughs> you know, it makes sense for te things like, like Shatterstar and... Uh, long shot it makes sense for you know the the two of characters uh yelena and well red guardian had his own special event so not even there it, those things make sense but this is a full team I, i'd like to see one of the characters be easily accessible even if it was a character like kitty pride but unfortunately you got some more blitzing ahead of you if you're like me you're kind of burnt out on blitzing just in general even though you only have to click auto i have to log in eight times a, a day to do it and that's about four more times a day than I'd like to log into Marvel Strike Force. Comment below, let me know how comfortable you are logging in multiple times, even if it's only for two minutes or however long it takes to click auto. Uh, bonus and flash events. We got Chaos Theory, great. It should be starting right now. If not, well, it'll be soon. And, you know, unfortunately the Wakandan sucks, so it's every week. I'm sorry, it's every month. Every month you're going to have to do this. So over time, eventually you will have a five-star Wakandan team, six-star, seven-star. But always make sure you're on your way to, to Shuri, because Shuri is really the thing that's going to hold you back. 
most important thing to remember is no matter how hard you farm the rest of the Wakandans or literally any team, the legendaries that come with them are only ever 90 days apart. So if you don't hit those numbers, you don't make sure you get the characters, the legendaries when they come out, uh, you're always going to just be a little behind the eight ball. I'd always rather have a stronger version of the legendary. Most legendaries can be used outside their team anyway. And then have to work on the characters as opposed to the other way around. Um, that's it for this week. Is it? You know, they showed a picture earlier this week on a couple of things talking about White Tiger. Um, this probably would have been a really good place to mention it, but what do I know? White Tiger, my... Uh, I'll just end this with the information you probably already have if you watch my stream. There's a couple of things you need to know are happening. Uh, Bishop, White Tiger, and Jubilee are the three characters everyone expects. Uh, Moon Knight is the fourth. There's a little bit of a discrepancy as to whether or not Moon Knight is a milestone character like Emma or a milestone character like Red Guardian was. Um, but he is the fourth character in the pool. Uh, Daredevil, Elektra, and Night Nurse are also receiving some reworks. I don't know how big or small they are, but they're supposed to fundamentally work a little bit better as a, t a core team, just to get them a little bit more value. Don't expect much from Elektra. And last but not least, the hand rework is not coming anytime soon. A hand character is getting reworked, not the hand characters. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later.